Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a diamond shape pattern in Illustrator. So we're going to start in Illustrator with a new document. I'm just going to create one that's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. So I'll click create. I'm going to create a square that is black filled with no stroke at all. And I'm going to make it 50 pixels by 50 pixels and I'll click OK. I'm going to rotate this, so I'll go to the Selection tool, hover outside the top corner, and hold Shift as I rotate it 45 degrees. Next up, I want to make it look a little bit more like a diamond. So I'm going to the Direct Selection tool here, and I'm going to select over these two anchor points here. Right now, the width is 70, and so is the height. Well, it's 70 and change. I'm going to make the width 50 pixels, because that's a known value. I'm going to make the height 70 pixels. The important thing here is that we know the difference between the width and the height, which is 20 pixels, because that's going to help us do the math soon. I'll just click away from this shape. I'm going to select over it again and choose Object Transform Reset Bounding Box. So it just sets the bounding box so it's square over the shape. I'd like to put in a couple of guides here. So I'm going to put a guide at 500 because this document is 1,000 pixels in size. So I'm going to choose View and then Rulers, Show Rulers. I'm going to drag over a guide and just make sure it slots in here at 500. I can double check that by just clicking in the middle reference point here and just make sure that this reads 500. I'm going to do the same with a vertical guide. So again, just putting it into position, double checking to make sure that its y-axis value is 500. The x-axis for this one doesn't matter. Guides are just shapes in Illustrator. They're just paths. So I'm going to lock down my two guides just to make sure that they're not going to move. I'll bring my path just above it. So now we can focus on this. I need to add some diamonds around this. So I'll choose Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste in place to get the first one. I'm going to flip this so that it has a stroke but no fill. And I'm going to alter its size right now. Its width is 50 pixels, its height is 70, because it's exactly the same as the first one we created. Well, I'm going to add 40 pixels to its width and 40 pixels to its height. So if you ever get stuck with math like this, you can just do 50 plus 40 and just press Enter. And Illustrator does the math for you. And so we'll do 70 plus 40. Next one, we'll actually do the math ourselves, but that just shows you that it's very easy to get Illustrator to do the math if you need to. Now we'll select our new shape, Edit Copy, Edit Paste in place. Again, we'll add 40 to each of these values. So its width is now going to be 130 and its height 150. We'll do that again. Its width will now be 170 and the height 190. And we've got one more to do. And so we'll end up with a width of 210 and a height of 230. Now, if you don't have your preferences correctly set in Illustrator, you might find, as I have found, that each of my shapes has a different thickness surrounding. The stroke is different. And the reason for this is that in my preferences, I'm choosing Edit Preferences General on a Mac that would be Illustrator Preferences General. I've got Scale Strokes and Effects selected. And so every time this gets bigger, the stroke is getting bigger. Well. What I'm going to need to do now is just to select over all of these shapes. I'm just going to pick up all of them here, and I'm going to set the stroke to a solid value of 2. So every single one of them has a stroke of 2 now. I'm going to select over all of these shapes, and I'm going to group them with Object Group. Next up, we need to make some additional copies of this, and it's pretty easy to do using the Distort and Transform. So I'll choose Effect, Distort and Transform, and then Transform. What I want to do here is transform from the center. I'm going to click Preview on. I'm going to make three copies, at least for now. And in the Horizontal Move area, I'm going to use half of the width of the shape. So the shape is 210 wide. So half of that is 105. 
And for the vertical, I'm going to add in half of the height. It's 230, so half of 230 is 115. And now I'm going to select on Reflect Y because that puts these in this sort of zigzag pattern. If you want to add another one, you could do so. So I'm just going to click OK. And now I want to do another transform. So I'll choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. I want to apply another effect. So I'll click here. I'll click Preview on. I want to do one copy. And in this case, I want to move this one down. So I'm going to do a vertical move. And I want to move it down exactly the height of the original shape. So the original shape was 230 high. So I've moved it down 230 and I'll click OK. So what that gives me right now is a sort of a repeating pattern. But what we want to get out of here is just the repeat swatch. So I'm going to select over this shape because everything's attached to it. And I'll choose Object Expand Appearance. Now out of this series of interlocking pieces, I want to take out just a block that is too wide and too tall. So I don't want all of these. So what I'm going to do is go to the Group Selection tool. I'm going to select over this set and delete them. And then I'll select over this set here and delete it and this set here. Just making sure that I don't take out the ones that I actually need. I'll take out this group and I'll take out this group. So now I have a set of shapes that is twice the height of the original shape and twice the width. I'm going to select over this group and I'm going to center it on the artboard because that will center it over this point here. So let's go to the Align Options. I'll choose Show Options, Align to Artboard and I'll center it over the middle of the artboard. And what I need now is to create a shape that is this rectangle shape in here that will become the bounding box for my pattern. And the shape size is exactly the same size as one of these diamonds, 210 by 230. So I'll just click here and type 210 wide by 230 tall. I'm going to make this a no fill, no stroke rectangle and it too needs to be centered on the artboard. So I'm just going to center it on the artboard. Because it's a bounding box, it has to be behind the shapes that we're going to use for our pattern. So I'm just going to move it behind the shape here. I'll select over all of these objects, open up the swatches panel and just drag and drop all of these objects into the swatches panel. I don't need these guides any longer. The guides were just there as a visual confirmation that everything was in the right place. So I'm just going to delete the guides. I can take all of these shapes because again, I don't need those either and just move them to one side and we'll test our pattern. My artboard size is 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. So I'll create a rectangle that is the size of the artboard and I'm just going to center it on the artboard target its fill and let's go and get our brand new pattern. And you can see that the pattern is filling the shape and it's working just fine. The trick with a pattern like this is to start with a diamond here that is a fixed size and then scale it up to get your extra shapes by increasing it by a known amount. And if you use nice round values, the calculations are just so much easier to make. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned something about Illustrator that you didn't already know. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.